flower fairs, tempo fairs, dragon and lion dances. While folk activities are part of tradition, the number of visitors to museums, galleries and libraries surged by more than 40% during this year's Spring Festival. Tickets for Beijing's Forbidden City were sold out days into the holiday week. Chinese consumers spend more money on the internet, while the consumption of traditional foods and local specialties also saw robust growth. For Chinese New Year's Eve, the most important family reunion dinner of the entire holiday, more and more families decided to dine out at restaurants or order food at home. Pre-cooked meals on Tmall, a popular Chinese e-commerce platform, increased by 16 times compared with last year. Chinese cinema earnings also hit new highs, raking in nearly 6 billion yuan. Eight films were squeezed into a tight schedule on the first day of the holiday, competing for the attention of moviegoers. As expected, comedy films remain popular with the family audiences. Warning. Earth engine system but The Wandering Earth, a Chinese sci-fi movie, was the black horse this year, raking in nearly 2 billion yuan in sales. Reuniting by taking trips is also in vogue. More than 400 million people travelled in total over the holiday, up by over 7% compared with last year. Both winter sports resorts and warm southern destinations were popular. Sanya, Xiamen and Harbin were the top three destinations favoured by Chinese tourists making longer domestic journeys. When it comes to outbound trips, Asian destinations still attract the biggest share of Chinese tourists, with Thailand being the most popular, Japan second and Indonesia third. If one thinks for certain, Chinese people are finding new ways to have even more festive and unique holiday experiences. Sci-fi thriller The Wandering Earth rose to the top of a crowded spring festival movie lineup to become the highest earning film of the holiday season. The space travel saga clocked over 2 billion yuan or $219 million in sales. The film is based on a novel with the same name by award-winning author Liu Cixin. It tells the story of an epic project to move the Earth and its 3.5 billion residents to a remote star system in the near future because the sun is dying and about to swallow up the planet itself. In many movies, people just flee and leave the earth behind when huge problems appear. No Chinese author has written this story in which we also flee, but this time we bring the earth, our home planet, to flee with us. In my opinion, the core part of my movie is about our land, our home planet. For a robust sci-fi genre in filmmaking, diversity is most essential. There must be many different styles. Stereotypes have no future. Other favorites this season struck a more comedic tone. The running up in terms of ticket sales is Crazy Alien, a sci-fi comedy directed by Ning Hao. Pegasus, directed by the novelist Han Han, chronicles the unlikely success of a short-order cook on a racetrack. It gained over 1 billion yuan. The new king of comedy from Stephen Chow also had filmgoers rolling in the aisles. Nowadays, Spring Festival is not just about eating and drinking. We focus more on things that make us feel spirited. For example, many friends of mine chose to travel or participate in various social activities during the holiday. We take our kids to watch films as a way to make our lives more spiritually enriched. Over the past week, a total of eight major productions have hit cinemas across the country, leaving movie fans spoiled for choice. The holiday once again saw the Chinese film market reach unprecedented new heights, with domestic films becoming smash hits around the country. Chinese participation in sports events has grown a lot over the past few years. You can see more and more gym and fitness centers around the city, and even free workout spaces. Lauren Hogan works for a fitness company in Shanghai and says the changes are obvious. In the overall picture, I have noticed you know, the bigger push for fitness and healthier lifestyle. Even the parks that are um, the more green space that's coming along the riverside and the cycling paths and running paths. 
The rising awareness of fitness issues has created huge new markets for sportswear makers. It's estimated that China's sportswear market was worth 212 billion yuan in 2018. Major market players have seen corresponding strong growth in their revenue here. That's why sports brands are focusing on rolling out more diversified products to meet growing customers' demands. Companies like Nike and Adidas are coming up with different lines of products, featuring new tech fabrics and materials. And despite the fact that half of the market is dominated by the top four brands, Nike, Adidas, Anta, and Li Ning, the market is seeing new players, especially fashion brands and outdoor sportswear makers. Sports and fashion are two industries that are getting quite close recently. The casual and street styles have a large impact on sportswear. We've noticed fast growing interest in outdoor activities like hiking or skiing. So these brands are getting popular as well. You can even see cases where big sports retail brands have required skiing or tennis brands. The Mintao report says that China's sportswear retail market is expected to continue to grow at an annual rate of eight percent in the next five years. Hello, 大家好，我今天在录。Greeting his fans in perfect Mandarin. It's almost a daily ritual for this Australian creative director. Based in Beijing and operating under the moniker Xiao Bei, Alistair Bailey is quickly becoming an online sensation in China. With many cherishing his direct and practical approach to sensitive everyday matters, I'm really proud to be able to provide an open, honest channel of communication between myself and my fans,、um, especially on topics you know anywhere from self-esteem to anything as serious as depression.、Um, these topics aren't often talked about in, in the day to day, and I think seeing someone in a position of influence talk about these openly and honestly、um, really opens up. That possibility for these people as well to show them that what they're going through is normal, and other people experience that as well. Boosted by some national television exposure, the accomplished Xiao Bei has amassed some 30,000 followers on his official Weibo account, while his personal website is also drawing thousands of hits every day. Currently working for a business development company, Xiao Bei says he provides an alternative window into China for the outside world. Where he offers distinctive perspectives on sectors such as culture, media, and technology, being able to draw on his over 10 years in China, he now sees himself in an influencer, or was known as a key opinion leader. For my day job, I work on creating content about China and daily sort of experiences in China for audiences overseas.、Um, and in that sense, I'm really lucky to know and work with a bunch of other foreign KOLs、uh, in China. Everyone has a different experience when they live here.、Um, China is often presented as this one monolithic thing that means the same thing for everyone.、Um, whereas I think by showcasing our different stories and experiences, we can show that it really is quite a diverse environment,、um, and that everyone is able to enjoy their own life in a different way、um, in China. Alan Chen has been cutting hair for over a decade, and if you don't think that's special, you're forgiven. After all, hairstylists are everywhere, and Alan's salon doesn't necessarily look extraordinary. At first glance, that is, because hidden in a corner is a mini museum of Alan's artwork. At first, I only shaved my client's hair with simple lines and shapes, but I wanted my work to stand out. I wanted to be different, so I started doing hair sculptures. This kid doesn't appear to be up for anything head-turning, but plenty of Alan's clients are. I've been making hair sculptures long enough, so that when clients come to me with an idea or a photo, I can make it appear on their head. Perhaps it's the artist in him, however. Recently, he decided he wasn't satisfied with just sculpting people's hair anymore, so he tried painting. Using hair clippings. I saw videos of sand art online, and I thought I could do the same with hair. So I collected hair clippings and cut them to even finer sand-like pieces. I started doing it, and I thought it was fun. It was the eve of the Lunar New Year when we visited him. This was a natural choice for the day showcase. After an hour's work, it was done. 
but Alan says he hasn't found a way to permanently keep his quote, paintings. So whether it's pigs, the dragon, or Aquaman, no matter how long they took to make, unfortunately, they'd have to be swept away as soon as business kicks in.